the world-renowned, famous YouTube star KSI. No, I didn't say KSI. I said KSI. That's more like it. In light of the very popular UK celebrity KSI's boxing match coming up, many training clips surface, including one of him totally transforming his body for the upcoming fight. Very impressive. We saw clips of him casually doing double unders, flaunting his footwork, and clips of his sparring sessions that showed some great potential. We also saw him being beaten to the core, which raised many questions, including myself. So this drove me into the science world once again. I set out to answer two main questions. One, is there any merit to these crazy core conditioning workouts we see? Do they actually help bring out your abs or at the very least help condition your core? And two, there has been a lot of hype around boxing lately, with famous celebrities all over the place boasting their transformations following a boxing workout regime. So I wanted to know, is boxing one of those workouts that just melt away fat? I was genuinely considering adding boxing workouts in my clients workout sessions until the world of boxing started to unfold in front of my eyes. As I delved deeper and deeper into the world of boxing, I came across some very interesting findings. Let's look at abs real quick. Anatomically, this is what we're working with. Rectus abdominis, yeah, those are your ab muscles, separated by the linea alba and a bit of connective tissue. All of this is surrounded by the external obliques and the serratus anterior. Many people believe that to see your abs, you simply have to grow them bigger until they pop out. However, this isn't the case at all. The visibility of your abs totally rely on the total amount of fat you have covering your abs. That's right, no amount of sit-ups will help you get a visible six-pack. That aside, social media influencers love to post videos of somebody brutally abusing their midsections, somehow indicating that core conditioning exercises like that is how you get more visible abs. I've heard two schools of thought here. One group says that by heating the fat on your stomach, you break down the molecules, which makes it easier for the body to absorb the molecules into your bloodstream and use it as energy. Which is a strange idea, but I can see where they're coming from. The second school of thought is a bit more sciencey. They say that when the midsection repeatedly takes hits like that, it triggers an inflammatory response. Water and blood accumulates around the area, which is what happens when the area gets inflamed. But they then go on to say that this increase in blood flow, accompanied by many ab exercises, increase the amount of fat being used around the abdominal area, therefore helping the abs to become more visible. Hmm. At this point, I was scratching my head. I don't even know where to begin to start and explain the madness behind these two theories. So I'm gonna let science do the work here. Here's a paper, here's a paper, and another one, and here's 10 more. <laughs> I'll leave the links in the description below. Every single one of these papers discuss a well-known fitness question relating to whether spot fat production is possible. Meaning, doing exercises with certain muscle groups to specifically reduce fat in that surrounding area. Sorry to break it to you, but not a single one of these papers found any evidence of this theory. Unfortunately, that's just not how fat loss works. The body gradually releases its fat stores to be used as energy based on the type of exercise you do and the type of diet you follow. I'm currently working on a video called The Extreme Intricacies of Fat Loss and How We're Overlooking the Most Basic Fat Loss Technique, which is also the most effective. It's a bit of a long title. I'm still thinking about it. Anyways, a cool video on fat loss coming soon. Now would also be a great time to click on the subscribe button. You can do it. Cool science videos await. Come on. Nice. <laughs> Boxing is awesome. It requires coordination training, agility training, cardio training, strength training, impact training, all mixed up into one big bowl of exercise goodness. There are a few pain points I have with boxing, however. Like the posture. Boxers end up having the worst posture. Well, besides for e-gamers, but I'll leave that topic for a later stage. Have you ever zoomed in on a boxer's posture? They have overdeveloped chest muscles from all of the fighting, overdeveloped trap muscles from all of the protecting, and underdeveloped scapular stabilizing muscles, all resulting in textbook upper cross syndrome. Forward head, rounded shoulders, over kyphotic spine, you name it, and their posture has it wrong. These also often result in the three main injuries boxers get. The first one is shoulder impingement syndrome, which is due to the compression of the tendon as a result of a decrease in subacromial space. Secondly, they seriously struggle with headaches, and it's not due to the obvious concussion risk, 
These are tension headaches. Those super tight traps I spoke about earlier cause them a lot of headaches. And the third injury they struggle with is lower back injuries. You don't realize it, but boxers twist their midsections a lot. And just like fast bowlers, if the training load is high enough, they can get vertebral cracks or disc evulsions. So yeah, boxing isn't a sport that I would recommend for everyone. I think some will greatly benefit from it, especially if you have some frustrations that you want to get rid of, but it surely isn't the magic weight loss solution that some of us are looking for. At the end of the day, good old calorie deficit and consistency is exactly how these boxers transform their bodies. And you can too. You just need to know what to do. That's why I highly recommend that you watch this video on what is a calorie deficit next. Anyways, that's it from my side for today. I'm looking forward to seeing the KSI fight. Maybe. I don't know. Are you looking forward to it? <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next video Mondays and Wednesdays from now on forth. See you there. Cheers.